This song's going out to everybody that's missing someone up in heaven. You know, up in heaven, we got something called Heaven's Phone. It's available 24 hours a day. Pick it up. Say hello. I still can't believe I'm really not here. Weeks, plans, and months, and months into years. You promised you'd stay. I know how you tried. But God needed you. I stepped aside I didn't collapse Did not fall apart But deep down inside There's a hole in my heart It comes out of nowhere Sight or a sound That's when it hits me That you're not around So much to remember So much to forget You left me too soon Is my only regret My heart breaks a little When I think of when We planned on tomorrows That would never end Everybody that's missing someone up in heaven. You know, up in heaven, we got something called Heaven's Phone. It's available 24 hours a day. Pick it up. Say hello. I still can't believe I'm really not here. Weeks, plans, and months, and months into years. You promised you'd stay. I know how you try. But God needed you, so I stepped aside. I didn't collapse, did not fall apart But deep down inside, there's a hole in my heart It comes out of nowhere, a sight or a sound That's when it hits me that you're not around So much to remember, so much to forget You left me too soon is my only regret My heart breaks a little when I think of when We planned on tomorrows that would never end Song Father here for the Song Father Show on the fourth day of November 2019. This is our 99th. Who's ours? Oh, yeah. 99th show. Ours is, of course, my co host Tino. There he is. Good looking dude. He's chatting up a storm today, boy. <laughs> Thank you. 
You're good. Okay, good. All right. So here we are on the fourth day of November. I said that already. 2019, I said that already. 99 show, I said that already. All right, good. So anyway, I hope everybody had a nice weekend. The weather was uh, pretty good. It's uh, you know, a little chilly. Right now on the island of Long, it's 58 degrees. Not bad. But it's been cloudy all day, so you didn't really get a lot of sun. But earlier, it uh, wasn't too bad. But not the same. Uh, snow, Friday. Snow, next Tuesday. <laughs> now, tomorrow, if anybody forgets to vote for me tomorrow, there's something wrong with me because tomorrow is Election Day. <laughs> anyway, Giants are on tonight against Dallas. This is a round two of the Toilet Bowl. The first round was the Jets against Miami, and the Jets got flushed down the toilet. So there you go. And um, the, uh, the Prez man had uh, the Washington Nationals up to the White House today for their, uh, to celebrate their World Series win and their very first ever franchise World Series win. So that was pretty cool. And uh, he did pretty good. And then, while I'm getting ready for the show, who steps up, interrupts everything, Mr. Mayor de blah, 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 to announce that Jimmy O'Neill is stepping down, retiring as police commissioner to pursue something in the private sector. Mm, yeah, okay. And um, O'Shea is taking over for him, so not bad. But, uh, you know, O'Shea's a nice guy, but, uh, and so was O'Neill. But, uh, you know, uh, succumb to the pressure, and when you lose the respect and you lose the backing everybody is supposed to be the head of, hey, you've got to go. But uh, I wish he would have stayed and blah, blah would leave. And uh, when it's time to vote for the mayor, I, I, you better vote him out. You vote him back in, then you deserve everything that you're going to get. Okay? Anyway, so uh, that's the story. So tonight's uh, theme, which was uh, given to us by daddy and Chris, since we did fall on Friday, you know, beginning of fall, so everything you do with fall, then he, they said, well, you do something about time then, because everybody had to screw around with the time. I'm like, yeah, good idea. Very nice. So I ran it past Tino, and Tino said, yeah, I like it. It's very good. Do it. So I'm doing it. That's what we're doing. And actually, I already did a whole show, and then something was wrong with these settings again. I don't know what it was, but uh, couldn't hear my singing. All you could hear was the background music. And, uh, maybe that's a sign. I don't know. It's a sign of the times when you tell your friends that you really love me. Some shit. So um, let's get to uh, uh, just a little shameless plugging. Then we'll get into the, to the good news stories, Chrissy's good news stories. Don't forget and vote for me. Vote for me and I'll set you free. Rap on, brother. Rap on. We're doing a very good job. we got six weeks to go, so let's not lose. Let's not lose the, the momentum that we've carried so far for the first month. And, uh, yep, I did it. Four or five Christmas songs are already up on the Song Father radio station. WLYV Live Radio 122.2. All song father, all day, all night long. <laughs> Daddy O hates that. Just go on your phone, go on your laptop, go on your home computer, whatever you want, and go to all capitals, www.thesongfathershow.com as we get closer to, um, um, I keep wanting to see Valentine's Day lately. We get closer to Thanksgiving. Uh, then I'll put you know more on, and then right after Thanksgiving, I'll put the whole rest of them on, and, and then all the fun ones too, the classics, with the millions and millions of views that it got. Paulie the big nose goomba, Frankie got run over by a caddy. Here comes menopause, and Dominic the freaking donkey. Oh, yay, 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 yay. Tonight, eight o'clock, Fred Rubino and Christine, get the food out of here. I don't know what they're making tonight, but it's always fun. He likes to go off on a tangent, and she reels him right back into that kitchen. Don't use that knife on that thing. What's wrong with you? Don't use this. Don't use that. Shut your mouth. Shut you. You're stupid. You're stupid. <laughs> you got to love it. It's such a fun show. And every once in a while, don't forget, if you're not a member yet, go and join. Rock in the Kitchen, Guy Talve. Not your grandma's cooking show, that's for sure. And I think a lot of people are listening to me now because uh, they're starting to put up a lot of their own, uh, their own creations. And uh, let me tell you, hmm, some good stuff out there. So, yeah, yeah, let's not forget, shall we? So let's get to some Chrissy's good news 
extra, extra. Read all about it. And uh, then we'll get to some of these time songs. But, you know, let's start off with this first. Slowly but surely, it's starting to come under control a little bit. And as long as no other idiots go and start anything. I mean, the fact that the governor, who's a shithead, and we'll get to that another time. I know, we'll get to it now. Uh, has, to, has to go on and make an announcement. Please don't throw your cigarette butts out the window. Wow. Anyway. So, um, him and, uh, I forgot his name, which is good. <laughs> but him and, uh, him and the president have been going back and forth. And everybody's jumping all over uh, 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 President Trump saying that he said uh, he's going to withhold now uh, any kind of uh, assistance, monetary assistance. And he didn't say that. What he said is, it's time for you to get off your ass and start cleaning up. We went through this already once before. I sat down with you and I told you, you need to start cleaning up the floor and this and that. You need to start putting some preventive measures in to prevent this from getting to the level that it is now you're seeing these pictures, you know. And uh, he didn't like the way uh, the Trump had said that. Too bad. And then uh, um, he said, well, if you don't believe in, in uh, climate change, then uh, you're excused from this conversation. Big tough guy, huh? Big tough guy. You got people crapping and, and, and pissing in every city that you have in, in California right now. All right? But you want, you want to be a tough guy? You want to be a tough guy with your fingers on, on, on your computer? Come on. You know? You're way over your head. Get out of there before somebody burns you up. It's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. So. And, and Trump didn't say anything wrong. And I don't get political, and I'm not getting political here, but he didn't say anything wrong that a leader would say. And, of course, I was never the head of the United States, but I was the head of, of a big, gigantic, I can say it now, they're not in business anymore, A&P, uh, and I covered a good part of the United States and Canada. And I had, to, I had to make decisions like that, and I had to say things like that. Like, if you, wanna, you want help, you want help with your labor, you want help with your pricing, well, you better start cleaning up your act. You better start cleaning those floors and you better start doing this and making sure everybody's in uniform and this and that before I come in and start, you know, spending company money on you when you're not doing the right thing by us. It's the same thing here. So he did nothing wrong. So anyway, we get to the uh, Chrissy good news. And let's go over to jolly old England, shall we? Cross the pond. An 11-year-old scored the highest ever IQ score, beating Einstein. 11 years old, she scored 162. A genius scoring is 140 or higher. She scored 162, beating Albert Einstein out. She was born in Iran, and then sometime before her teens, they moved over to England, and of course, obviously a very good student. But the fact that she is, you know, being gonna be in Mensa and everything else, that she scored higher than, you know, arguably the smartest guy in the history of the world, Albert Einstein, Look at her. She beat Albert, Albert Einstein. We're so sorry, Albert Einstein. <laughs> but, yeah, so congratulations to that little cutie right there. Look at those dimples. Unbelievable 162. Ah, very nice. So, anyway, then we shoot over to Minnesota, and a couple had uh, a, um, I think it was a 12-year-old husky at home, and... Uh, they were out somewhere, and uh, they heard about this husky that needed to be uh, uh, rescued, adopted, whatever. And they went in, bonded right away, took him home. And him and the older husky got along from the start, from the very beginning, got along famously. And um, they um, let them out. They played together. They did everything together. They ate together. Everything they did. Then, unfortunately, like Puff the Magic Dragon, which everybody thought that... Uh, uh, you know, the little kid died. He didn't die, he just grew up. But I don't know how I got off on that subject. But um, the older husky passed away. So uh, without able to be clinically diagnosed at depression, that's what this, uh, this other husky was going through. Already had a traumatic life, you know, dumped off at a shelter, not knowing where you're going to be, you know. And, and, you know, the, the, the yelling, the screaming, the smell, everything else. It's a horrible existence for them. And uh, so now they get rescued. They got, he's, he comes home. He's got a pal to play with now. His pal's gone. Um, so they went and they got a, a duck. They lived on a nice big uh, couple of acres in Minnesota. And uh, they were worried what was going to happen with the dog. So they kept the, do the, the duck in a, in a cage, you know, almost like a dog's uh, you know, travel cage or uh, 
uh, night cage that some people use, which I can't stand. Okay, get in the cage. See you in the morning. What do you get to go into the bed for? And they got to go to, to go to jail for the night, you son of a... Anyway. And uh, so they noticed that uh, this husky kept going over by the cage, you know, walking around it, looking inside. Then ended up um, spending a lot of time sitting there and then taking naps right again with, with, with his body right up against the cage. Then, you know, sticking his nose in and, and, uh, and the duck was sticking the beak out. And I mean, you know what? They go, let's try. Let's see what, they, what happens. So they stood real close. You know, make sure that all of a sudden the husky didn't just jump because, you know, they're predators by nature. And they open the gate. Mm, the duck is taking a long time to come out. I don't blame him. And then he yeah, sticks his head out and he comes walking out. The husky comes up. Next thing you know, the duck is rubbing up against the husky. And, uh, and uh, nothing happened. Nothing bad happened. And they became this. Everything together. They go for walks together, they play together, they play with the ball together, they chase each other around the yard, they eat together, they, they take naps together. Look at these pictures. Don't ever tell me, and I've said it before and I'll say it until I can't speak anymore, that, uh, of course, that'll never happen, <laughs> that animals don't understand, you know, that they're just animals, you know? Like when we, tell, we, when we say about people, oh, they're animals, well, that guy's an animal. You know, you, don't say that anymore because you're giving them a compliment. Look. Look at them. Look at the top picture on the left-hand side. There they are, palling out, walking down the street together. Look at the size of the husky and, look at the, and the duck waddling next to him, you know. And then after a long talk, they take a nap, you know. And sometimes, the, according to the owners, uh, they take turns, like the, the husky will go to sleep and the duck will keep watch. Then the duck will crawl up and take a nap and the husky will keep watch. And look at that. Oh, my God. This story just, it just got me. So now they're inseparable. And they say that sometimes when they walk down that street, like you see in the first picture on the left, um, cars stop, not because they're walking in the street. Cars stop on both sides and pull over just to watch it like they've never seen anything like this before. So cool. So very cool. Good job. Good job. Now we take a quick trip over to North Carolina. And the husband um, you know, loves his wife, married to her for, for a while. Uh, but they, you know, they always go a little back and forth with each other a little bit here because, uh, according to him, she, uh, three, four days a week, has all kinds of shit coming from Amazon, delivered to the house. What am I made of money? You know the old story, the old argument. Come on, stop ordering things for crap. So a birthday comes up. The man does the, does the coolest thing that I ever heard of. I would do that. But I don't have a wife. Look at the cake he had made. Come on now, ladies and gentlemen. I ask you, please, is not that not the best cake you ever saw in your life? Hmm? Even, I, I, obviously, the left, you can see the cake inside. But the stuff that looks like cardboard is the cream. They, they, they got the color perfect. The label is the same. It, it's, it's edible, right? Even the edge where you can see the Amazon, you know, is, is like on the tape when you order from Amazon, you know? And you see Emily McGuire, that's her real name. One, two, three, four, birthday lane. Blah, blah, blah. And he wrote on the top, happy birthday, honey. You can't see the honey part, but what an unbelievable great idea. And um, they asked her, so what'd you think? Would you, would, did you get mad when she saw that? She goes, no, I laughed my rear end off. That was, that's the, 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 that's, that's the best birthday cake I ever had and probably ever will have in my life. So, very good. Love it. If you're not smiling and you're not busting chops and having fun in your relationship, you are doomed. Doomed. Not dunes, doomed. <laughs> and then over in New York, right here in the state where I live, an eight-year-old, eight years old, wins the New York Chess Championship. Eight years old. He beat guys 20, 30, 40, 60. He beat them all. Eight years old. So if that's not impressive enough, he lives in a homeless shelter with his family. Doesn't even have a home. Doesn't have a computer just plays in the corner with himself or anybody in the cell that wants to play on days we can go out. He goes down, you know, where the park is and they play and he plays the people down there. And uh, he's well on his way to becoming a grandmaster of chess. And his goal is to become the youngest um, chess master, grandmaster of chess ever. Eight years old. Look at this guy. Look at that face. Eight years old. That's one of the matches that he won. Five moves he was done. Unbelievable. It is like just unbelievable. 
eight years old. God bless him. He's going on away. We're going to be hearing about him one day. But you won't know who it is because I didn't give his name. And uh, so let's get to a couple of tunes. And then we'll come back to Chrissy's good news. And uh, this is all about time. So, you know, we're talking about setting the, the clocks back an hour and all that other crap. And so much shit I got on, on Facebook because I told everybody, don't forget now, set your clocks ahead 23 hours. No, that's, that's, well, it's spring ahead, fall behind, son. Yeah, I know. Yeah, but you just told everybody. I know, well, read it again, see if you can figure it out. Now, I don't have to read it again. It says spring, you have set the clocks ahead. It's spring ahead, fall behind. Yeah, okay, whatever. So then a couple of people, privately I went, because I don't want to embarrass them, which I should, but I don't. And I said, listen, if it's 3 o'clock in the afternoon, right? Yeah. And you set your clock ahead 24 hours. What time is it? It's 3 o'clock. Right, okay. So if you set your clock ahead 23 hours instead of 24 hours, what is it? Well, it's 2 o'clock. Yeah. What does that got to do? In? Okay. So when it's 3 o'clock and you have to set your clock back an hour, what time is it? I could see them going like this. Oh, yeah, 2 o'clock. Oh, yeah. But why is that spring ahead? Ah! <laughs> oh my god. Anyway, so let's get to some time. Let me get some time songs. And this one. Sonny can't sing Cher, but Cher can sing Sonny or back and versa. I don't know. If I could turn back time, if I could find a way, I'd take back the words that have hurt you. I don't know why I did the things I did I don't know why I said the things I said Cries like a knife, he can't cut deep inside Words are like weapons, they wound sometimes I know that
it's about time if I could turn back time. Well, we did. But now. Glenn Gamble's talking about some time. By the time I get to Phoenix, she'll be rising. You'll find the note I left hanging on her door. She laughs when she reads the part that says I'm leaving. Because I've lived that good. be working to probably stop and run and give me a call but she'll just hear that phone keep on ringing off the wall Turn softly, call my name out low. She cried just the thing I'd really need her. So time and time I try to tell her so. Just didn't know I would really go I would really go Must remember this A kiss is still a kiss A sigh is but a sigh The fundamental things apply
case of do or die The world will always welcome lovers As time goes by Played it for her, you can play it for me. If she can take it, I can take it. I said play it. Thank you. That was my Humphrey Bogart. <laughs> Not the king of rock and roll. Oh, this is two A's Aaron Presley. <laughs> You're not a dream. You're not an angel. You're a woman I'm not a king Just a man Take my hand We'll make a speech In this land That we play Here Here I stay Till it's time For you to go Yes, we're different, worlds are part, we're not the same. We left and played at the start, I in a day. You could have stayed outside my heart, but in UK, you stay till it's time. Oh, it's 
Now they say that absence makes a heart grow fonder, fonder. And that tears are only rain to make love grow Well, my love for you could never get stronger, stronger. If I live to be a hundred years old That's the way it happened every time before I can tell that you run comes up tomorrow Tomorrow Crying time will start when you walk out the door Ooh, Well, it's crying time, time again You're, You're gonna, gonna need me. me I can see Far away look in your eyes I can tell by the way you hold me, darling That it won't be long before it's crying time That it won't be long before it's crying time Give myself a break here. Let me stop bawling my eyes out. Let me turn down that light a little bit. There. there you go. Okay, so where do we leave off? Oh, the eight-year-old chess championship of the world. Then we're now we're on our way to Chicago. And um, on now. There you go. All right, now we're on our way to Chicago. And over there, a woman... When she was, uh, got her first full job after she finished going to school to become a nurse. In 1964, she bought a brand new, off the lot, brand new Mustang convertible. She wasn't looking for a Mustang. She was only looking for a convertible. Typical woman. I didn't say that. Tell you, know, what's wrong with you? <laughs> and uh, so she bought it. And her whole family got to use it. The brother, two sisters, mother and dad. They only had one other car. And, you know. Things were tight, and they stuck together like families are supposed to do. And uh, then she met somebody and got married and took the car with her. And it lasted about 15 more years, and then it just died. And uh, so she wanted to get rid of it and turn it in. And the husband saying, no, 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 you don't do that. Just why it doesn't work. You got a nice car, and, you know, we're building a family, and we just bought a house. And, but no, I'll, I'll, I'll get it to work. I'll work on it. And he put it in the garage, and it stayed there for X amount of years later. He never, you know, never put a wrench to it or anything. So now he's retired, and he starts working on the car. And he's going all over the place, eBay here, this, using the Internet, like trying to find parts because he wants to keep it original and keep it as mint and cherry as he can. And uh, so uh, he's noticing that uh, there's this man that's getting a lot of accolades as ha <coughs> excuse me, having the very first um, 1964 uh, Mustang that came off the assembly line. He's got the very first one, and he bought it on April 16th, 1964. Goes running to that. Honey, 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 when did you buy that Mustang? She's like, what? When did you buy the Mustang? 64. You know, no, I know, but what was the date? I'm thinking it was the 15th because, I don't know, I just remember something about, you know, the date and April 15th and taxes and the due. And the she goes, I really don't know. I've got to have it downstairs, and he runs downstairs pulls out this and he finds the paperwork sure enough she bought it on the 15th 
This guy bought his on the 16th, so now they own the very first 1964. It's a 100-year anniversary now uh, of the Mustang. They own the very first one to come off the assembly line that you paid $3,400 for. Okay. Without the engine running, the car is now worth $380,000. Yeah, that's right. You heard me. $380,000. Here she is. She con they contacted Mustang. I mean, uh, Ford. They checked every number, this and that. Yep. The very first one to come off the assembly line. And uh, so they fixed it all up for her. Kept everything according to the numbers. You know, nothing added, nothing, you know, everything perfect. And uh, there she is next to the car. See? You see? She was telling him, get rid of it. We're going to trade it in. Doesn't matter. He was a lazy bastard. <laughs> Look what happened. Turned this, a $3,400 car into a $380,000 car. Unbelievable. Got to love when good things like that happen. And then, it doesn't say where. And I looked quite extensively to try to find it. Couldn't. But a veterinarian somewhere in the United States uses his dog as a, um, a social worker, uses his dog as a nurse to help calm down the other dogs that are going through procedures and everything else. I just thought it was the coolest thing. Look at this. Yeah, got, yeah, the dog's there's got IV started. They get up. This dog jumps up on a table like that and just kind of talks. I'm, hey, buddy, don't worry about it. Everything's good. Yeah, no, nah, the human's mind. He's good. You know, yeah, as soon as you feel better, we'll go outside, we'll piss on a couple of trees and everything and chase some squirrels, you know. But for now, do me a favor, just lay there and relax a little bit. And that's what he does. And the, the vet says he doesn't let him in with cats. He will take him to the door just to see. But um, no, and if there's a dog that's uh, very excitable, uh, you know, just from being in there, um, he'll do the same thing. Hold him on a leash or hold him by his collar tight, walk him in and see what happens. Let him get a little close to the table. And if the dog... Uh, Accepts him, then he lets him stay in there. And, um, and this is what he does. Look at that. So next time you decide to call somebody an animal or people animals, you know what? Find a different word because I'd rather be called an animal than a human. Look at this. Look at the look in the patient dog's eyes. Just look at him like, okay, look, pal, I, I appreciate it, but you want to you get your tongue out of my mouth? No, I'm kidding. He's looking like, really? Yeah, yeah, okay, all right, thank you. Ah, oh, man, it's just unbelievable. And then uh, over in Massachusetts, uh, a, a father or family but, um, has a son that's been wheelchair-bound from birth with cerebral palsy, and, uh, but is also uh, uh, autistic, severely autistic, non-verbal autistic. And uh, so... Um, you know, it's very, very tough communicating, uh, obviously. But uh, every Halloween, at least this is the fourth year of doing it, uh, he is now, hold on, I know I wrote it down, 15. But every Halloween for the last four years, um, the father and uh, neighbors and even some family come over and they build something um, that's going to wrap around the wheelchair and so he can go out and do his trick-or-treating and, you know, not be pushed in a wheelchair and feel different from all the other kids that are up there running around in costumes and everything else. And uh, so, so far they've done a Star Wars starship. They've done a uh, dragon from Game of Thrones. And they're in Haverville, Massachusetts. And uh, last year they did a Haverville PD car. But this year they outdid themselves. Check this out. Ready? Look at this. It is a SR-71 Air Force fighter jet. And they took pictures of it from the father's father, or the kid's grandfather, who was a uh, Air Force fighter pilot and had just passed away this year. And they were going through, you know, scrapbooks and all the pictures that he had, and they saw that, and they go, that's what we're going to build. And um, the other two guys were people from the neighborhood that helped them put it together, and they just took stuff from you know behind the garage in the garage and everything else and pieced it together sanded it down painted it there's lights that go around the outside the two rockets you know where you see on the wings they light up uh, out the back it looks like it's about to take off the dashboard lights up and he his wheelchair is completely covered so now when he goes out it's no longer trick-or-treating time 
everybody's running over to him. Oh, my God. Hey, buddy, how you doing? And, uh, this is beautiful. You know, and he smiles and he moves, but he's nonverbal. And, uh, wow, they're awesome. They, you know, high five. And he gives them high fives. And the smile, uh, you know, is from ear to ear. And, you know, the tears are also from everybody else is, uh, is just, you know, tears of joy, of course. And, and, and some sorrow in there, too, that he can't be, uh, you know, walking around with his friends. But when he's in something like that, everybody wants to walk with him. So good job, Dad and the, and the, the neighbors and friends and everything else. That is, uh, to me, that's a home run. I think that's just unbelievable. It really is. And uh, okay, so that's the good news. We're done with the good news. Correct. Good. And uh, we'll just finish up now with some timely songs, and uh, then we'll send you on your merry way on this 99th show, if you could ever believe it. This is Mr. Paul Ankles. Because what we're doing all is really the times of our lives. I should have played a song by the times. As we stroll along to it. Suicide song. See ya. Bye. <laughs> why, why? Why is it so bad? Once upon a time. That was once 
upon a time Not too long ago Once upon a hill We sat beneath the willow tree And waiting for the dawn But that was once upon a time Now the tree is gone How the breeze ruffled through her hair Tomorrow wasn't there We were young And didn't have a care Where did it go? Once upon a time Sweeter than we knew Everything was ours How lucky we were then But somehow once upon a time Never comes again Time. No, Dune, Stella, I'm not leaving you with tears in there. Here we go. Heavenly shades of night are falling. It's twilight time. Out of the mist, your voice is calling. It's twilight time. When purple colored curtains mark the end of day. Twilight time Deep in the dark And shadows gathers Play is done Fingers of night Will soon surrender The setting sun I count the moments Baby till you're here with me Together At last the twilight time As I did then Deep in the dark Your kiss will thrill me Like days of old Lighting a spark of love That fills me With dreams untold Each day I pray For evening just to be with you Together At last the twilight time Now, uh, 
we're out of we're out of time. The hell was that? Oh. We're out of time on the time show. You get it? Time, time. <laughs> there goes Daddy O. Chris, he's doing it again. He was pretty good the whole show. Now he's a schmuck. He's acting like a schmuck. Chris, Chris, he talked to him. No. All right, so that's the show. We were at the 57-minute uh, mark, so I want to get in before an hour. Don't forget. Don't forget. Where is it? Don't forget. Tino, you know, he loves you. Don't forget to vote, vote, vote for me. Don't forget. A lot of nice songs, Christmas songs on the Song Father Radio Show. Don't forget Freddie Rubino tonight, 8 o'clock. Get the food out of here. Don't forget Guy Tave rocking the kitchen. Don't forget. Don't forget anything. Don't forget tomorrow will be the 100th Song Father Show, which is quite amazing. We're at 57 minutes and 35 seconds. <laughs> so thank you, everybody. Thank you very much for everything that you do, for the smiles you bring to my face, for always backing me up and showing support. Keep voting. Keep sharing. And we will see you tomorrow. I don't know what I'm going to do yet, but it's going to be big. It's going to be huge. 100 shows. What are you kidding? I must be something special. So I love yous. Tino loves yous. Have a good night. I'll see you now, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bam! Mm-hmm.